So we didn't get off to the start we exactly wanted to begin the season, as other than AJ Burnett, our team's pitching has been the main reason for that slow start. But we've turned things around here headed into May and are only a game and a half back from the Mets to start our second month here. As we're going to start with a short two game series here against the Braves to open up this episode, which was a team we struggled against last month. Josh Beckett would be getting us started here in the month of May, as up to the plate is Mike Lowell, top of the second inning. He's going to take this one deep center field that one is going and that one is gone the first home run we fit in a game this year courtesy of Mike Lowell as he would come back up to the plate here runners on the corner fly ball that's going to be caught and that's going to be a sack fly so just like that two RBIs from Mike Lowell is now Alex Gonzalez up to the plate that's going to drop down into shallow right field and our shortstop's going to get himself an RBI Jeff Conine up to the plate now Runners on the corner, deep fly ball, and we're going to continue stacking on the runs here. A three-run homer from our first baseman, as now Mark McElmore up to the plate for the Braves, trying to get something going, and they would finally get on the board with this two-run homer. But that would be all that Beckett would give up this inning, as Julio Franco would fly out to right field. And now the Braves are down to their final out. Raul Mendesi is going to ground out to Mike Lowell to end the game. And Josh Beckett would end up pitching a complete game for the Marlins as they would walk away with a victory. This was a great outing for him as he only gave up five hits and two earned runs through this complete game victory. And the team would show up again the following day to complete the sweep of the Braves. We would, however, then be approached by Chris Aguilla, who is not happy with the playing time he's received so far and if we're being realistic he's never going to get much time in our lineup so we would end up trading him to philly for a young promising shortstop prospect in amir sheriff who has 90 speed and is very young shortstop was one of the positions i wanted to upgrade so amir would step into damian easley's backup role behind alex gonzalez to develop and easley would go back to backing up juan pierre in center field following those moves we win a series against the rockies two to one and then we get a message about Guillermo Moda being upset with his contract. With Moda being someone we want to keep in our bullpen, we'd offer him a two-year, $2.1 million extension that he would happily sign, and that would bring us to a home series against the Houston Astros. Mike Lowell in the box here, bottom of the first. That's gonna be a deep fly ball into right field, and that is gone. A three-run homer for Mike Lowell to open up the day. That would bring up Luis Castillo now in the bottom of the second. Runners on the corners, and he is going to drive in a run for us. As now, back up to Mike Lowell. Bases loaded. He's going to take this one opposite field that he did the home run, and he's going to drive in two more RBIs. As we would extend this lead to 6 to nothing. as now it's Jeff Conan getting in on the action as he's going to drive in a run for himself. We would go up 7 nothing to the third inning now. Brad Osmus is finally going to get Houston on the board here. As that solo shot would make it a six-run game, but Miguel Cabrera had other plans as he's going to drive this up into center field for an RBI and Mike Wool again not done yet for us today as he is going to drive in another RBI into center field this time as he's hit every area of the outfield so far left field center field right field you name it and he's driven in an RBI there Amir Sheriff now looking to get on base for his first time making his MLB debut today as that's going to be an RBI for him. Bouncing off the pitcher. So his first hit is an RBI. And then Josh Willingham is going to manage to make it the first here. And that would bring in Guillermo Moda for us out of the bullpen. He has just signed a two-year extension with us. So he is going to be our closer for a bit. As he would manage to force Willie Traveris to ground out. And would come in and get the save here for the Marlins. As Amir Sheriff would go 1 for 5 today in his MLB debut. But would pick up an RBI in his one hit. But after that game it turns out we had another unhappy pitcher in our bullpen. So we would re-up John Riling for another 2 use in the pen. And then we would end up completing the sweep of the Astros. But we're now looking to avoid getting swept by the Padres. We're going to jump in top of the first tier. Runner on third, Miguel Cabrera up to the plate. He's going to drive that into center field and get us on the board first as Luis Castillo now looking to do the same. Runners on the corner. He's going to take this into the gap, into left field. That's going to score one, possibly two runs. 
But no, they're going to stay at third. So we would go up two to nothing here over the Padres. And again, Miguel Cabrera not done as he is going to drive in two RBIs here for a stand-up double. And then Mike Lowell, who had a fantastic series against the Astros, is going to keep performing well here this month as he's going to drive in another RBI for himself. As that would bring in Nate Bump from the bullpen. He's looking to turn around his performance he's had so far this season. Phil Nevin now up to the plate, and he's going to line out to Mike Lowell at third. And then Ramon Hernandez. Pop up into the infield. Luis Castillo is there, and he's going to put that away for the Marlins. And Nate Bump is going to get the save here in San Diego, and this team is going to avoid getting swept. As that was a much-needed win, as we needed some positive momentum to take on the 24-13 and 13 Dodgers in our next series. And believe it or not, we would end up sweeping one of the best teams in the National League. And just before our next series, we would make our first call up from AAA as Scott Kent would be joining our bullpen rotation now. As now it would be time for some interleague play against the Devil Rays. And first up would be Aubrey Huff. He's gonna take this into left field. And Julio Lugo is going to be rounding third. Juan Pierre to the cutoff man. They're going to throw home. Jeff Conine has him at the plate. What a play by the outfield to relay it in and get the play at the plate. As now Rocco Baldelli is looking to drive in a run. Play at the plate. Not in time this time. As Tampa Bay would go up 1-0. But Mike Lowell looking to change that. Is he's going to take this one out in left field. And it would be a one-all game. Bottom of the fifth now. Paul LaDuca looking to give the Marlins the lead. And he would do just that. As that now would bring in Scott Kent from the bullpen. Just called up from Triple A, Making his debut. And he's going to start by giving up an RBI to Aubrey Huff here. But that would be all he would give up as a ground ball to Mike Lowell would get us out of the ninth. And we would be headed to the bottom half of it now. Mike Lowell looking to get on base here, but he is going to fly out. As we would head now to extra innings. Scott Kent still in the game. Alex Gonzalez is going to throw to first, and that's going to go over the first baseman's head on this routine play to first. And he's going to have a triple on this air. A routine ground ball to Alex Gonzalez, and he's going to overthrow base. That's going to result in a triple in Miguel Cabrera. Why are you catching this? As Carl Crawford is going to tag up, there's no need to do that. As now, the Rays would have the league, and that's going to be a ground ball on the first base. And that would end the game as the Devil Rays are going to walk away with a victory here over the Marlins in extra innings. While Scott Kent would get the loss, who knows how this would have turned out if Alex Gonzalez made that routine ground out play. So we would end up dropping 2 of 3 against the Devil Rays, but would end up taking 2 of 3 against the Phillies to follow it up. And that would give us a 5.5 game lead of the division, and with a chance to take 3 of 4 against the Mets, to end the month of May, we had an opportunity to make that gap even bigger. We would jump in, bottom of the first, runners on the corner. Miguel Cabrera is going to take this one deep right field, just short of the warning track, but that would advance the runner from third, and we would go up one to nothing here in the first. Mike Piazza now up to the plate for the Mets. This can't be good if we're seeing a highlight of him in the batter's box, and he's going to take this one just barely over the left field wall, and that would be a solo shot for Mike Piazza, as he would tie this game up at one apiece. Juan Pierre now, though. Runners on first and second. That's going to get down into center field. Runner comes around third, and he would score. That would be an RBI single for Pierre. It's now Wilson Delgado in the game for the Marlins coming off the bench he would ground out but would get the RBI as Guillermo Moda coming in from the bullpen having a fantastic season with an ERA under one as he has just recently signed that extension with us as Josh Willingham is going to field that over to Moda he would step on first two outs here top of the ninth ground ball Sheriff on the first for the final out, and that would do it as the Marlins would walk away with a victory. And to close out the month of May and start June, we would split four games with the Pirates and would still only have a five and a half game lead of our division. But there's been some reports of unrest this month from some players in the locker room. So next episode, we're going to have to try to sort all that out to continue this success.